Welcome to all you YouTubers out there. It's Sunny. Nice to see you again. I hope everybody's been healthy and happy and doing the best they can with the circumstances that we're finding ourselves in the last 14-15 months. Um, tonight I was going to make a video for you um, showing me trying a new idea that I had. Kind of a new take on the leftover meatloaf sandwich. And um, first of all, I wanted to say I went ahead and made some toast. This is the keto bread that you can get at Costco in a two pack and it has net zero carbs. And um, some of you may remember that Dennis has diabetes. So we are always trying to shave off some carbs here and there that when we can so that he can indulge in other things because like so many people, you know, we have the big biscuit revolution going on, uh, or maybe it's a revival. Um, and uh, Miss Brenda Gant has really um, added to that. She has gotten everybody trying White Lily, which is some wonderful flour if you can get a hold of it. Um, I had to have it brought in from Amazon. Uh, my bread is just Oro wheat, and I've gone ahead and made the toast for it. Um, the reason White Lily is so good, if, if you haven't experienced it before, is it's the only flour in um, America that is made with soft winter wheat. And it really does make a difference in your biscuits. And um, there's a lot of ways to make biscuits. And, um, you know, I trade secret trade secrets with... Um, the ladies at the White Lily Baking Facebook page. And um, so we've been trying some of those biscuits and I have to save some of his carbs for being a guinea pig on trying those different things. Um, we really seem to like the self-rising flour with the heavy cream because the heavy cream has got so much fat content in it that you don't have to worry about putting any Crisco lard or butter into your self-rising flour. But let's get on with this. We had some leftover meatloaf. Now, for a change, I uh, saw something that with uh, Coffee Time with John and Mama that he had said he likes to take his meatloaf and put them in the cupcake tins. And so I have some cupcake tins that are um, bigger than your average cupcake. And so I've got two left over, and these are meatloaf cupcakes, so to speak. They were very delicious, but I thought we'd make them into a new experiment. And we'll see if it's going to taste good. Um, we're going to be serving it tonight with a nice green salad that I made. And I have come to um, the point where I cut my own romaine and uh, iceberg and I and I shave with the box grater my carrot and I cut real thin um, purple cabbage because the bagged um, lettuce it just goes so fast and um, it either turns nasty fast or we eat it fast and it's not cheap at all so we're gonna be having that as a side and then I also have some banana cake that I made without a recipe. I was pretty proud of myself. I just started throwing it together. This has got some pecans and a little bit of raisins in it. And it's got a cream cheese frosting. So that'll be our dessert. So, okay, let me get to the point. I know you're all curious. What am I leading up to? My mom used to, when I was little... I don't know what she did towards the tail end of her and dad's lives as far as eating. I don't think they eat this anymore. I don't think they were eating that. But um, when I was a kid, she would grind up bologna. And she'd grind it, grind it, grind it. And she would make what she called ham salad. And I was thinking, why couldn't we cut up this meatloaf? and put some stuff in it and make meatloaf salad sandwiches. So let's give it a try. Um, I have here one uh, diced dill pickle. It was about this size. 
and I'm going to just chop this other one up, and so we'll have two. I didn't think that the sweet relish would probably be too tasty. Now, you might want to give that a try at your house and let me know in the comments below if you do try it. And let me know if the sweet relish did work. But I was thinking that dill pickles might taste really good. And I know some people might have the dill relish. It's kind of hard to come by, but I have seen it during my lifetime. I have seen dill relish. So, two um, on the small side dill pickles. This is something I have discovered. It's not too spicy. It's just got a little bit of a kick to it. And I was thinking that I could spread it on our toast instead of putting cheese. Okay, so now let me chop up this meat real. Now I'm not gonna need a grinder, of course, because this is gonna just kind of fall apart pretty easily. Let me get it out on the cutting board and uh, move some of this, move my plates over here. As you can see, I'm still cooking at my living room using my table. So here I have, okay, we're going to just chop them. Let's see if I can push this down where you can see me chopping a little more better. It looks like that's about going to be as good as it gets. Okay, so, oh, it's still cold. So I hope that everybody leaves comments and let me know how everything's going with you all at your house. And Dennis and I have been staying safe. He He's fortunately able to do his job at home on his work computer that he had brought home at the beginning of the pandemic. So um, he's been doing that. And uh, we've been ordering our food and everything else in. So it's not like um, I haven't been out and shopping and out and about <clears throat> like I used to all the time. And uh, when it comes, we have uh, um, a UVC um, wand that kills uh, germs and COVID uh, bugs with the light. So when things come in, and Dennis is kind of, I'm the procure procurement officer, and Dennis is the, uh, I don't know what they would call that, <laughs> the one that's in charge of uh, our health security officer. <laughs> and uh, so he does it with the wand light wand and then he'll use the Clorox wipes and I was very happy I was able to get off of Amazon early on um, some food grade uh, hydrogen peroxide now you don't want to use regular peroxide because it has an additive to stabilize it and this additive is not at all good for you to get into your body okay but if you get the food grade now, even with the food grade, you're going to want to, first of all, you have to um, dilute it because it comes in 12% 12, um, 12 strength, and that's way too strong. So you want to dilute it at least half and half, if not more, okay? So if you get some of that, read the instructions. I wanted to err a little bit on, on the side of caution by be, mixing it up a little bit stronger. So you mix it up and then keep it in a spray bottle, hopefully a dark one so that it doesn't degradate over time. Now I have my two meatloaf things cut up here. I just chopped them up, rough chop, okay? That's kind of crumbly. I'm gonna put that in my bowl. And uh, so let's see, what else was I saying about the, oh, uh, yeah. So we do the light wand and we do the Clorox wipes and then if it's produce we um we don't do the clorox wipes but we do spray it down with the food grade hydrogen peroxide you have to let it wait for it it says that it kills the covid germ within something like 45 seconds or something like that but i let it sit for two or three minutes and then i rinse it excessively well with water 
So, and we haven't gotten sick with any of that. Oh, I was telling you about the keto bread. Now, it uh, when you make it in toast, it does not taste quite as palatable as it does when it's soft and you're making a salad uh, sandwich with it. So what I found is if I pile on some very yummy <laughs> real butter then, before I start making his sandwich, then the flavor goes back up, okay? So I'm going to get a knife or maybe just this and we'll spread. So yeah, I have become proficient in making buttermilk biscuits. Uh, which I oftentimes don't use buttermilk. Uh, buttermilk is, of course, the preferred. But I like to use the, it's the lazy girl's way. Uh, I like to use the heavy cream. Otherwise, I would, if I, if I didn't have heavy cream and I was going to use buttermilk, I would take a stick of frozen butter and grate into it. Because that time when I did that one worked really well, too. Okie dokie. So, and I'm going to slice. I have a beautiful beefsteak tomato. And uh, these things cost over here about three and a half bucks each. So it's a special treat when we get those. Um, I'm going to put in my dough pickle. So I got my, everything's going to be going in the bowl. Okay. Oh, there was a little juice in there. I don't think that's going to hurt a thing. Do you? So, some of the YouTubers that I've been watching and enjoying, uh, and in the Facebook pages that are like, and I've got like a tablespoon of mustard, that's going to go in. This is stuff that I always put in my, like tuna fish, chicken salad, and if I, on a rare occasion, chop up bologna, of course, you know, I kind of keep an eye on my um, salt. And bologna is so high. One thing I have discovered during this uh, being in lockdown is that um, when I am Ono for a hot dog, um, I've discovered that I can poke a bunch of holes in the hot dog and then just boil that sucker for a little while. <laughs> and it leaches out uh, sodium and oils from the hot dog. Now, I'm not too worried about the oils in the hot dog, but you know that salt gets to me something terrible. So, and of course, we're going to have our mayonnaise, right? Um, yeah, it's not the best. My favorite way is just to, you know, would be to, well, either grill them outside or even cook them in the toaster oven and broil them and make it kind of like you cooked them outdoors. But uh, the problem with that is it condenses that sodium. And when I eat them, it's like, oh, it's so extremely salty. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to put just a little pinch of sugar. You know me. I like that little pinch of sugar. Oh, my fan blew it away. So I have an excuse to put another pinch. And one for good luck. <laughs> So I've been having fun just cooking up a storm. My friend Alberta, she's doing fine. I know I always spoke about my best friend Alberta. And uh, she asked me the other day, how come you always are ordering so much food? And I said, because we're all the time eating so much food. Okay, so let's fix this up, okay? We're going to put this on our sandwich. Oh, it looks like it's going to need a lot more mayonnaise. We'll just see. I have never heard of anybody making um, a, a, sal a sandwich spread with their meatloaf like this, have you? I thought, I might be the first person to think of this. Then you know what? That's kind of what happened with little Miss Brenda Gant. She just was making a video to teach her uh, friends in the in her church there in Andalusa, Alabama, how to make biscuits, because some of the younger ones didn't know yet. And she made that, and then it kind of got out, and people saw it, and 
before you know it, now she's like a superstar. She's got a book coming out. She's got uh, in uh, Taste Southern Taste so Taste of the South. One of those magazines is going to have her have a monthly article and pictures and stories and recipes every month. And she was on my Huckabee show, and she's just like a superstar. Anyhow, we're so also proud of her. That's how she got started. Oh, now I put um, more minis in so it won't be dry. And there was probably enough salt and pepper, but you know, a good cook always tastes first and adjusts the seasonings. Now I made a pretty nice meatloaf mixture the other evening and I had uh, those little mini sweet peppers um, that Coffee Time with John and Mama uh, that I watch on uh, Facebook, he likes those little mini peppers too. He keeps them, I keep them in mine. Let's have a taste of this, okay? See if it needs anything. Mmm. But I do think it needs a little more sugar. <laughs> you know what? Mmm. That's really good. Oh, no, I forgot. Darn it. Well, don't you forget. I had just thawed out some bacon, and I told Dennis, <coughs> I'm going to... Can I have a little water, please? Just a sip. i got to go get you some. Oh, thank you. Um, I should have got myself a glass of water just in case. I had told Dennis, I said, let's throw out some uh, bacon, and I'll cook up the bacon and put it on our um, sandwich, too. Which, you know, I just realized I forgot to make the bacon. Got to cook your bacon in the oven, 375 to 400 degrees. Let it cook off. Oh, man, that is good stuff. Well, anyhow, I'm going to just skip the bacon but when you try this, if you got bacon, you know, everything's better with bacon. Okay, so let's take some of this jalapeno. Dennis has got his butter making his bread taste yummy. We'll get some of this jalapeno cream cheese. I, I'm on it. I tell you honestly, like the folks down at, um, in Texas that like uh, spicy stuff, they will laugh at this because this is not even spicy. Anybody that likes hot food is going to think that this is so super mild. And <clears throat> to me, it just gives me a little kick. So I'm going to put that on first. Okay. Thank you, my dear. My sous chef. And today, the part of my drinking glass will be played by the measuring carafe. <laughs> Been watching some of my RV friends. Now, I hope you guys watch, uh, let's see, who do I watch all the time? I watch RV Rebel Girl. Look her up, okay? Let's cut this tomato. At least I didn't forget the tomato. Um, I watch uh, Camper Van Kevin, and y'all pray for him because he had some cancer taken out of him, and we're believing that everything's just completely done now and hunky dory. But of course, you know, with anybody that's gone through that stuff, they they could appreciate your prayers uh, as they continue on getting scanned and checked out and stuff. Okay, so I've got some nice, to look at that beefsteak tomato. It's so nice and meaty. Oh no, I left the sticker on. See, just like before, the pandemic didn't take my goofiness away. Okay. All right, we have been really blessed to be able to stay in the house and stay safe because you know us both would be a little bit now let's pile some of this 
meat stuff. See, it looks like a meat salad. Oh, well, that's fine. I was going to say, oh, I forgot to put the extra sugar, but that's okay if I take Dennis's out before the extra sugar goes in. He would want it that way anyhow, I'm sure. He's a savory guy. So he has his salad over there, and I'm going to give him, and you know what Sonny always says to Dennis? Hold it with both hands when I make a sandwich like this. Okay, so Dennis, let me hand off your sandwich. Let me put it on your plate. Hold it with both hands. Thank you. You're welcome. So now, where's that sugar? I gotta have more sugar. And let's see, camper van Kevin and his friend Felix. A really nice guy that hangs out with camper van Kevin. And I told you RV Rebel Girl, Creative, Creativity RV um, Robin. Always watch her. She's incredibly smart, analytical. Um, I think she used to be a college professor. Um, I might be wrong. If Robin, if you're watching this, which I don't know why you would be, but if you see it, and uh, just comment below, please, and, and t tell them what it was that you used to do back before you started your RV life. Um, so anyhow, uh, let's see what else is new. Rachel moved to a new place, and it's a really nice little um, house. And she's doing great, and I have... A one-year-old great-granddaughter named Hazel which was my favorite grandma and um, she just made one years old on Saturday and then my first great-grandchild he made three just a little while ago and he's a big boy and he's so smart okay I need another drink Cheers! Ah. Okay, so my bread needs some jalapeno cheese. You can fix this up so many ways. Put a slice of cheese. Don't put a piece of cheese. Put, but definitely do the bacon. Oh my. The reason why I could kind of sort of get away with it not putting bacon on it this time is I put um, real bacon in the, the um, meatloaf when I mixed it up. So there's some bacon in there anyhow. I just wanted to have nice crunchy extra pieces of bacon. Okay, so there you got that. Go get me a nice thick slice. I love tomatoes. Tomatoes is one of my favorite things. So I'm gonna put a nice big slice there. Is it yummy, Dennis? Yeah. Hmm? I'm eating my salad. Oh, he's eating his salad first. So he doesn't know about the meat sauce. Uh, meat. meat sauce. The meat sauce. Meatloaf sauce. Meatloaf. What do we call it? I don't know. We're going to call it meatloaf salad. Meatloaf salad. Uh, I'm looking for the pepper. You know why I like pepper? Because it goes great on your tomato. That is not the sticker. That's a piece of jalapeno from the cream cheese. Okay. So, let's give this a try. Meatloaf salad. I guess if you didn't have bread or you didn't want to eat bread, you could do what so many restaurants do with chicken salad. You could put it, no, well, you could do that. You could take one of these nice tomatoes and cut out the center part 
just enough so that you could put a nice big scoop of that in there. Okay, there we go. I'm going to hold it with both hands. Let me move this out of the way. Ah! Oh no, it's a mess. <laughs> Oh my, is it ever a mess? Hold on. Oh, emergency, emergency. We're gonna move my plate on top of that. Okay, here we go. Mmm. <laughs> You should try this. This is a winner. It's much tastier than just throwing in <coughs> some meatloaf into meatloaf slices onto bread. Don't choke, Sonny. Ah. Okay, a shout out to Kenai if you're watching. Gigi's video. Hi, Akina. Mmm. It's so messy. You might not want to pile it so high as what I did. So, I got my salad here. I got to go in and get my drink and my um, salad dressing out of the fridge because I forgot to do that. Oh, I guess I got my water, which I appreciate, Dennis. Thank you. Um, I would say, try it. Try it. Um, you can see it's pretty messy. Um, that's probably because I put a little bit too much mayonnaise. At first, it was really kind of on the dry side. And then I think I went overboard with the extra. So, you know what? Be prudent as you're mixing in extra mayonnaise. And just do it by maybe a tablespoon at a time until you get the right consistency. So it kind of holds together. But, you know, it's not the end of the world, right? Because even with it being a mess like this, I can take my knife and fork and eat it like open feast style. Nothing is lost. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go wash my hands, get my salad dressing and stuff like that, and enjoy my dinner. <coughs> oh, I'm choking on that meat. Ah. Anyhow, I love you all, and um, I want to thank you. There was a few people that uh, sent messages and said they were worried about me. So thank you so much. Love you guys. Sending you hugs and kisses from Hawaii. Aloha.